one of the Thai idioms for meditation is making an effort. Tham kwam pian. And the important thing, of course, is to make the effort right. Brute force is not going to take nirvana by storm. As a John Fuang once said, if you could get into nirvana simply through effort, we all would have been there by now. You have to make the effort right effort. And this involves an element of discernment, wisdom. There are several aspects to right effort. One that we're probably most familiar with is the, the simple question of the amount. There's that famous story about Venerable Sona, who was very delicately brought up, so delicately brought up, they say they even had hair on the bottom of the soles of his feet. So when he became a monk and was doing walking meditation for many hours, his feet started to bleed. And he got discouraged. Here I put so much effort into this, he said, and I still haven't gained awakening. Maybe I should disrobe, go back to be a layperson, make merit. Well, the Buddha happened to read his mind and levitated, appeared right in front of him. And asked him, back when you were a layperson, you were playing the lute. If you tune the strings too tightly, what was it like? Well, that didn't sound good. How about if you, they were too loose? That didn't sound good either. How about if you tuned them just right? That was when the music sounded right. He said, it's the same with your meditation. You tune your effort to the amount that you're able to do. And when you tune a lute, you tune one string, and then all the other strings are tuned to the first. And in the same way, you tune your effort, and then you tune the rest of the faculties, your conviction, your mindfulness, concentration, discernment. You tune those elements to the amount of effort you're able to put in, and the meditation will go well. So in this case, the discernment involves seeing how much you're actually able to put in when you're pushing yourself too hard, when you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And how do you know? Well, you try pushing yourself, but seems too hard. See what happens over time. Because we do have a tendency to be lazy. We all want to belong to that group with an easy practice and fast results. But the people of easy practice and fast results have pretty much all gone to nirvana already. So we're the ones left over. So you push yourself until you find, okay, this much is too hard. You can tell from your own experience. Then you let up a bit. You don't go back to the other extreme and say that effort is bad, it's simply that you've got to fine-tune your effort. But the amount of effort also depends on the particular problem facing you. There's another passage where the Buddha says that there are some defilements that will go away simply by watching them. You don't have to analyze them, you don't have to put in any effort simply by noticing that this is a defilement, and realizing you don't want to go there. It'll go away. Other defilements, though, require what the Buddha calls exerting a fabrication. The fabrication here is, has many aspects. There's verbal, mental and physical. Physical, physical fabrication is the breath. In other words, when you see greed or anger or delusion arising in the mind, you ask yourself, how is the breath going right now? Can I change the mind state by changing the way I breathe? And that, of course, will involve verbal fabrication as well. It's called directed thought and evaluation. Instead of chattering on to yourself about how much you want something or how much you're angry about something, you start chattering to yourself about the breath. Ask yourself, how is the breath right now? How does it feel? What would feel better? Once you've got something that feels good, how about spreading it around? And how do you spread comfortable breath around the body? 
and it's also an element of right effort. If you push it too hard, you destroy the comfort you started out with. If you don't ask questions, if you don't take an interest, it just doesn't happen. So again, you've got to find the right amount for dealing with the breath. And then finally there's mental fabrication, which is feeling and perception. In this case, once you've got a useful feeling from the breath, you put it to use. You don't just sit there and enjoy it. You see what use can be made out of this, again, by spreading it around, by making it permeate the whole body, giving the mind something to do, because it's very easy when the mind gets into a pleasant place for it to start drifting off, going into delusion concentration, where everything is very pleasant but not very clear. You're still, but when you come out of it, you can't quite figure out where you were. Were you with the breath? Well, no. Were you asleep? No. So in order to avoid that state, you've got to give the mind work to do with the feeling of comfort. This is one of the more radical parts about the Buddhist teaching. Comfort is not an end in and of itself. It's something you can use. And then you use your perceptions, the labels you have for things, for figuring out how to get the most out of the comfort you've got, and also how to analyze that defilement that was causing so much trouble. And you can use your perceptions in lots of ways. If you find that you're angry at somebody, there's that famous image the Buddha has of a person who's tired and thirsty and hot, crossing a desert, needing water, and finding a little puddle in the cow footprint, and being willing to get down on his hands and knees and slurp it up because he needs the water so much. In the same way, when you're angry at somebody, you have to realize that you yourself are tired and thirsty and hot and trembling. In other words, the goodness of your heart is not yet strong. It needs nourishment. And focusing on the bad points of other people is not going to nourish the goodness of your heart. You need their good points. Even if it means getting down on your hands and knees and slurping them up out of the cow footprint. That's one way of using perception to put yourself in the right mind for dealing with what the refinement may be. So that's called exerting a fabrication. So again, you've got to use your discernment to see when the issue in the mind will go away simply by watching it, and when you've got to make an effort. There's more to right effort as well. In the classic formula, the Buddha says, you generate desire arouse your persistence and uphold your intent for four tasks. But even before you take on the four tasks of right effort, notice the attitude you've got to have. You've got to generate desire. You've got to want to do it. And your wanting has to be wise and discerning as well. I mean, it's easy to point out there are people who have a very strong desire for awakening, and the desire actually gets in the way of their awakening, or their desire is really neurotic. They're trying to obliterate themselves. That's where that idea of that the stream enters wipe out their personality comes from. There are people who hated their personalities, and so they wanted to get rid of them, and thought here was the Buddha's approval of their attitude. That's a kind of neurotic desire, which is, is easy to satirize and easy to make fun of, and it's really unhealthy in the practice. But Satirizing it, making fun of it, is not helpful either. You've got to realize there is healthy desire. Desire for awakening is a lot better than most people's desires going around in the world. But you, again, you've got to learn how to do it skillfully, with wisdom. In other words, you realize awakening comes from causes, so you focus your desire on the causes in a way that helps give rise to them. If it requires being mindful, okay, you work on being mindful. You want to arouse the desire to be mindful, to develop concentration. Okay, arouse a skillful desire to be concentrated. The term skillful here is important. Look at the meditation as a skill, not something you're just going to push yourself through in blind effort, but 
notice what skills are required to get the mind to stay still. And then once it's still, you get up from the meditation, how can you maintain that stillness? It's like balancing a bowl of oil on your head. You have to be very careful not to lose your balance, not to get distracted. How do you do that? Take it as a game, take it as a challenge, and try to figure out what you can do to meet that challenge. In this way, the, the desire becomes a healthy desire. It takes this massive task of becoming awakened, it breaks it down into manageable bits. As you work on all the various skills that you need as a meditator, trying to figure out how to get the mind to settle down when it's angry, how to get it to settle down when it's lazy. How to give it energy when it's depressed. How to make it more stable when it's getting too manic. These are all important skills to work on. So your desire for awakening has to get focused on the, the steps that lead there. And realize there are steps that you can follow, bit by bit by bit, and it works up into something that's more than the, the sum of the steps. Some people say, well, this focusing on the path like this distracts you from the, the deathless which is all around you. But it's not a distraction. The, the Buddha taught a path. He didn't teach the path as a distraction. He said, this is the way there. Because of the complexity of the mind, it is possible to work on a fabricated path that takes you to something unfabricated. So you generate the desire. In other words, you have the right attitude toward the effort. This requires wisdom as well. And then there are finally the specific efforts to abandon any unskillful qualities that have already arisen, to prevent unskillful qualities that haven't arisen from arising, to give rise to skillful mental qualities. And then when skillful mental qualities have arisen, then how to maintain them. Those are four different types of effort. So again, you've got to learn how to read the situation in your mind. What needs doing right now? Do you have to focus on getting rid of the unskillful side, or do you have to focus more on developing the skillful side? You can learn how to read your mind so you can understand what the right effort will be at any one particular time. So it's a question of the amount of effort, having the right attitude toward the effort. And the amount being based, one, on the level of energy you have right now, and then two, the specific problem you're dealing with, whether it requires no effort at all or requires a lot of effort. And then there's developing the right attitude, and then finally the right kind of effort. All these qualities, when you put them together, constitute right effort. So when we're doing our effort here, making our effort, tam kwam pian, realize that it's largely a matter of discernment, understanding, and then a willingness, a desire to give whatever effort is needed. Because sometimes it takes a lot of effort to overcome a particular problem in the mind, a lot of patience. Your mind gets knocked off balance and you try to go to the breath and it just doesn't seem to be any breath there at all. And if you immediately get worked up, then you've got a problem. But you say, okay, the breath has got to be here. If there's no breath here, I'd be dead. You can detect the breath, but it's not comfortable. Be willing to sit with it for a while, as you would with an irritable child. So that your patience finally helps get the breath to calm down. So whatever effort is needed, whether it's the effort to sit there and be very still and very patient, or whether it's the effort to push in a particular direction, you've got to be willing to give the effort that's required. And you've got to develop your discernment to figure out what's needed at any one particular time. There's no one blanket 
piece of wisdom that's going to cover all situations. Wisdom, after all, the word wisdom, banya, is, actually means discernment, realizing that there are differences. Sometimes you accept the way things are, because you can't do anything about them yet. Other times you realize, I've got to push. And accepting the way things are may mean that realizing that you do have the power to make a change, the power to make a difference in the mind. And you now have the opportunity to do that. It's the right situation to really push and make a hard effort. When you've got all these factors working together, that's the kind of effort that forms part of the path. In fact, it's such an important element of the path that the Buddha said, four right exertions, which are, again, the basic formula for right effort, can stand in for the path as a whole. So try not to bring a simple-minded attitude toward right effort. It's a complex issue, but it's not so complex that you can't figure it out. It's simply a matter of time and using your powers of observation. The Buddha once said, if you want to know a person, really know the person's virtue, you've got to spend a lot of time with them and be really observant. And the same thing applies to your mind. You've got to make observing the mind and spending time with the mind your top priority. Because it takes time, it takes effort, but it's time and effort well spent. <laughs>